Hey everyone, welcome to the Social Network MySpace webcast event. With me right now is Aaron Sorkin, screenwriter. You clap. Andrew Garfield, Justin Timberlake, Jesse Eisenberg, Army Hammer, Sarah Rocks, yeah she does, on MySpace asks, did any of you meet the people you are portraying? Um, and if not, do you or did you hope to? Andrew? No, no, no. Uh, no meeting. No meeting of Eduardo. I would have loved to have met Eduardo. Um, he, um, I had two photos um, that I had to, to go from. Um, but he, he's very um, handsome and, um, you know, <laughs> I mean, he may be to people. Yes, handsome, I don't know. Um, Did they reach out to him? To um, I, I've, I've no idea. I know that he had to sign a non-disclosure agreement um, after the, 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 the lawsuit, the, well, the out of, out of um, court settlement with, with Mark, the undisclosed settlement. Um, so he had to sign a non-disclosure agreement. So he wasn't accessible or, um, and even if he was, he would probably run away <laughs> um, uh, in fear of his life. Um, but, um, but no, I would have loved to, when you're playing someone who exists um, in flesh and blood and skin and bone and breathing somewhere in the universe, it, 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 you feel a great sense of responsibility to make sure that you don't um, destroy that person's, uh, you know, like misrepresent him or her in any kind of way. So I think we all felt a certain amount of great, well, a great amount of responsibility um, when we, 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 we took on these very, well, you know, living, breathing people. Eduardo has disappeared off the face of the earth. We did uh, uh, try hard to find him. But as Andrew said, Eduardo's settlement was in the hundreds of millions of dollars, but conditioned entirely upon him never speaking about this uh, to anyone again. He was aware that this movie was being made, so he ha has just gone and hidden. Um, I was really uh, so blown away by your performance there. You tra transformed, you uh, were so wonderful in it. And I was wondering, one, if you got to meet um, the the man that you portrayed, who was you know, the creator of Napster, and um, and what you did to get into this role. Uh, That's very kind. I I um. You don't like compliments. I, I'm sorry. That that one was made me a little uncomfortable, but Aww. that's okay. Um, I'm glad that you guys did like the movie. I think that it speaks to. Um, I think it speaks directly to you, and I think that's what was so intriguing to me about when I when I read the material. Um, I, I don't know, I didn't have to run uh, through a huge gauntlet like they do on the television show Wipeout 2. <laughs> but uh, I did, I did uh, do, uh, I did a couple of auditions. Uh, I'm perfectly fine telling you all that because I did actually get the part. Um, uh, and which consisted of actually getting to read the material with Aaron Sorkin and David Fincher. So... Uh, it doesn't really, it's kind of like uh, getting to learn, uh, you know, Moonlight Sonata while uh, Beethoven is uh, teaching it to you, to get to read with Aaron his, his words, which are so beautifully musical uh, and, 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 and just fantastic. Um, I did actually meet Sean Parker, uh, but funny enough that we're talking about the audition process uh, in the way the uh, interweb uh, works. Uh, it was uh, sort of widely speculated for a awkward, for me, uh, three-week period uh, where I did uh, audition for the first time and then the second time where it was uh, just sort of blasted onto the in internet that I was going to be playing the part. Meanwhile, no one had told me officially that I was oh. going to be playing the part. So I did actually meet uh, Sean Parker in New York City very briefly said hi uh, I was walking out of somewhere and someone called my name and I turned around and he introduced himself. And Army, you uh, so so brilliantly played twins and they're so, such different personalities. Um, what challenges did you face going into that and how did you just approach the role? Uh, I mean the the process of portraying the twins was uh, was something we wanted to go about carefully because we didn't want to let them bleed together to yeah. create sort of one character. We wanted to make sure that we had two uh, distinct individual personalities who were still able to operate in some sort of team-like capacity. Uh, so myself and another actor, Josh Pence, he and I worked for several weeks beforehand to come up with their mannerisms, come up with you know 
their interpersonal relationship? Do they look at each other? Do they touch each other? You know, how do they communicate as twins? You know, all that stuff was stuff that we had to figure out and learn about twins. But in terms of, you know, a lot of the research, most of it was done by Aaron. And we were handed such a complete script in terms of characterization that, it, uh, I mean, it made it easy for all of us. All the other research that we had to do was probably, uh, you know, peripheral. No, but the amazing job that Army did was that in, in playing identical twins, there isn't a good twin and an evil twin. These guys are separated by about 11 degrees of personality difference. So it had to be a very nuanced performance. On top of which, uh, uh, he's uh, got to credibly play a world-class rower. So uh, Army was on the water every morning with the Harvard crew coach uh, rowing, and he, he did an amazing job. And then it was really just, you know, terrific lighting from, from Jeff Cronweth that um, made you look handsome, uh, <laughs> I, I thought. That was a, a lot of smoke. Vaseline there. on the lens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I want to go to another uh, MySpace question. Uh, Angie, you guys know Angie on MySpace? Uh, she asked Aaron. Oh, Angie. Right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> so she asked Aaron, uh, what about the Facebook story is more compelling to you than other internet stories? And would you ever write another internet story after this? Yeah, well, again, it, it, it wasn't, you know, believe me, if the, if the same story was behind the invention of MySpace or Friendster or Google, um, uh, I would have written that. It, it, it wasn't the Facebook of it all that, that drew me to this. Uh, uh, it was the, the humans behind it and what happened and the fact that uh, um, two separate lawsuits were brought against Facebook at roughly the same time. The defendant, the plaintiffs, the witnesses, they all came into deposition rooms. They all swore an oath. They all gave testimony. And what came out of it were three very different versions of the truth. So rather than pick one and decide that's the truth, that's the story I'm going to tell, or pick one and decide that's the sexiest, that's the story I'm going to tell, I really like the idea that there were three different and conflicting versions of the story. We're going to take another question from uh, MySpace, and Nikki Robin actually asked, um, what is it like acting with an Aaron Sorkin rapid-fire script? Jesse, I'd like to go to you on that one. Uh, it's fantastic, not only because he's such a fantastic writer, uh, who I've been a fan of for a very long time, but because uh, I felt um, uh, he his very kind of unique and singular style perfectly captured my incredibly unique and singular <laughs> character. Um, you know, my character is a guy who has having ten conversations um, uh, to another person's one conversation, and um, Aaron's able to kind of capture that in a very real way. Uh, and so it was kind of a lot of fun to explore, um, you know, kind of explore the very complicated thought process that my character has. Adam on MySpace, uh, were you happy or disappointed that Facebook wasn't involved in the creation of the movie? And what do you think about their reaction to the film? Uh, we uh, uh, aggressively produ uh, uh, pursued Facebook's participation in the movie. I knew I was going to be speaking to a lot of people who had an axe to grind with Mark, so um, you know I wanted to be able to talk to Mark too. After a lot of negotiating, Mark did exactly what I would have done and declined to participate. And to answer the question, Honestly, I was relieved that he did. I didn't want the movie to be perceived as a Facebook production, and surely there would have been some sort of editorial controls uh, uh, that they would have asked for as a prerequisite, and I would have been unwilling to, to give them. Uh, as far as Facebook's reaction to the film, the film hasn't opened yet, and, and I don't think they've seen it. Um, uh, they, their PR people are every bit as good as our PR people, so, uh, you know, they're saying that the, the, the film isn't true, it's fiction, uh, uh, it's not, uh, uh, we disagree with that. Um, they, they haven't been able to identify anything uh, uh, in the movie that's fiction, but like I said, there's two elements. One is that uh, uh, in, in, after taking oaths in a deposition room, there were three versions of the truth, so at any given time, at least two of them are going to be wrong. Uh, and uh, the other is that I, I do the same thing that, you know, Bill Goldman when he wrote All the President's Men or Peter Morgan when he wrote Frost, Nixon and the Queen do, uh, you know, which is that I take an available set of facts and I construct a story out of it and uh, uh, I write in, in dialogue uh, and I construct those scenes so that they lay out as a story. So everyone, uh, go see The Social Network. 
in theaters this Friday. Thank you guys so, so very much. And thank you, everyone, on MySpace.